Good day. This is Br'er Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We continue to dig for the foundation, a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today, I want to discuss how to stay healthy in an imperfect world. You've seen the elections. At least I followed them. Before I knew it, it was six o'clock in the morning and uh, Yes, your eyes get a little bit blurry and you don't know what to think about it. But reality is how to stay healthy in an imperfect world. We talked about some of the fascination and affectionation and why the body of Christ is fixated on a man called Trump, a man that has tendrums, a man that deals with reality as if it doesn't exist because all he sees is his own reality. And that brings me to a point that I recognized in his behavior and the way he is talking and acting something closer to our home. We have in our family a situation like that and it's called asparagus. ADHD or closer ADD. Some people like to understand those terms. This is where there is an attention deficit disorder. When people choose to manipulate a person into the White House so that they can benefit from it, that is what I believe has happened. Then my question is why the situation with the body of Christ. I want to stay in general. There are people that are outspoken about following and succeeding and helping President Trump to get reelected. They even get, go as far as thus says the Lord. And folks, I've learned one thing in my life, and I am 70 years of age, so I hope you understand that I speak with respect and I want it to be respected. It took me seven decades to understand this. But when I open my mouth and speak in behalf of God, I better be very sure what I say, because otherwise I am lying. And so folks that have been speaking out, thus saith the Lord, I would go down and repent and maybe shut up, maybe even reevaluate your lifestyle. Because the reality is, if God does not speak and Satan is speaking, how do you stay healthy in an imperfect world? See, reality is you have to go back to a base. See, the basic principle is very simple. Christianity by content and about the body of Christ. By content, there are over 600 million Christians in Africa nearly 400 Christians in Asia. Now, those are statistics, okay? So I don't know the exact number, but this is the number I go by. About 550 million Christians live in Europe. The higher number of Christians in Europe reside in Russia, 105 million, and in Germany, 58 million. Now we have Latin America, there are over 600 million people in Latin America and mostly three regions. And then there's North America. Around 230 million Christians live in North America. Now, North America is considered the United States and or Canada. Approximately 25 million Christians live in Oceania. Those are the islands. So you might wonder why in the world is that good for anybody? I call it the jacket edge. And when I looked it up, it appears that we have successful movies, 1985, and music groups in the 70s or late uh, 80s even, with the name 
the same name jacket ads. Though I got it as the following. A jacket edge it means it is marked by irregular projections and indentations on the edge or surface. The jacket edge of a broken window. So if you ever have had a ball go through the window or you are the fortunate one to do that, like me did, then you know that when you kick in a window, there are always jacket edges and you have to be very careful. And secondly, I found out that the terminology in the dictionary is also called having a rush or harsh quality. Not a stutter exactly, but a jacket sound as if the words are being broken off from some other stronger current of words deep inside. Some of you might say, now what the hell is going on? It's pure deception. I do not know how to explain it on the, in another way. So I give it straight to you. We all have been deceived. Just when the question pops up, is it wrong to be a Christian? My answer is, what do you think? Are you happy where you are? Or do you feel about reinvention? In other words, what about reinventing your situation? And the reason I take this picture from the official flag, I want you to realize this is very serious. This is a virtual background. I understand that very well. And I like the picture, but the reality is, do you like the situation you're in? And I'm talking to the body of Christ, in particular, those in the United States, because you have a very difficult situation. It is not easy to be confronted with a situation that causes so much commotion. So let's break and check out what are we dealing with. Can you reinvent your life and be happy? Let's focus. Can you reinvent your life and be happy? So we talked about something that is really painful. When I say painful, some of you people are really in tune with the politics happening right now in the United States because you live in the Americas. I used to live in Canada, so it was always a big deal when something happened in the States that could affect Canada. When the elections are turning sour for a particular group, it is never fun losing or the perception of losing, because did you really lose? No, it was just the general population making a choice and saying, listen, this is not the way we want to go. We have to shift. And by shifting, I mean, we have to go in different direction. And that is particular what is happening. But my concern is not the politics. My concern is the leadership of the body of Christ that has be preparing the flock to choose or demanding or insisting or telling people this is what God said. And my problem is that when God speaks, he is very clear. When someone is praying in tongues very fervently, and insisting to overcome something, to basically manipulate a group of people. And we're talking about 230 million Christians live in North America. So there's a fair chunk of people that live in the States. Those people, and why do I say that? Because there's only about 32 million uh, people in Canada. So that means there's about 200 million people in the United States. They have been manipulated. And I'm talking about especially the person that is now blamed by the president for he lost or he's facing a loss. Paula White down south. I heard others, God speak, said Rod, inviting other prophets. God speaks. This is what I heard. Another man that I've always admired, but he used to ride a bike, big guy. 
He overcame so many problems. And he became a multi, multi, multi millionaire in the business of Christianity. So what am I talking about, folks? I'm talking about what is the church, the body of Christ doing? Are we aware what is going on? Are we aware that if we are focusing on a political party and tell people that this is what God wants us to do and the man loses? Yes, folks. I've been talking about this for quite some time. Um, I wrote a book about it last year, so it is not something that just happened by accident. And we all have our dark periods in our life. Today, I'm not celebrating something. I am only dealing with an issue that is extremely important. Why were you not told the truth? See, I'm talking about the body of Christ as the prodigal son and daughters. Because you being a Christian doesn't mean that you are now safe. And why can I say that? I was an evangelist for 12 years. I got raised in a Christian family. My mom died when I was six years old. So I ended up in an orphanage with my brothers and sisters. Seven years later, my father remarried. And he had called us home. The only problem I had was now at age 13, I did not fit in exactly in a home. So I was a rebel, period. And when I was 16 and I was climbing outside along the um, spout to go two floors up at midnight, I got kicked out of the house. And I've lived since then on my own. Today, as we make this video, it's 2020, November elections, of course. So it must be the 8th of November. And I'm 70 years of age. The fact that I had only a short period in the home and a 44 plus year marriage has taught me an awful lot. And one of the things I learned was when I was in jail. The period of fighting a government took 18 years, 12 years in court. When I spent millions of dollars in court and I had no more money left and I had no more collateral because billions of dollars had been taken, I now faced reality. What do I believe in? How come I am in this position? I told, I was told, and whatever goes through your mind. But reality is, how come that I, with eyes wide open, eyes wide shut, believed what I was told when I went to seminary, when I went to Bible school, what I shared with the fellows in prison, in the prison ministry, and now facing reality, sentenced six years, times three, maximum security sharing a cell with the enforcer of the Hells Angels, who just did maximum security five years and was now facing another rep because his hands were deadly. We had something in common. Can we change our lives? What we had in common was we both wore a red or orange coverall. We were all the same, dressed the same. Nobody made a difference who you were, yet they were afraid of sharing a cell with my friend because he was well known. His big nickname was The Enforcer. And the question is, can you reinvent your life and be happy? See, my whole life, I set out to grasp what is it with the body of Christ and why the misperception overall and according to the Pew Research Center, two and a half billion believers in different denominations are in society. This is a center and that is a study of global Christianity at the Gordon Conwell Theology Seminary. So this is reported to Christians all over the world. Two and a half billion, they say in 2019. We're talking to 20, 2020, 
So maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. So nearly one third of the world's population claims Christianity. And some of you people say, why are you saying that? Well, one third is Roman Catholic. That's the strongest group. Then you have the Protestants. They are evangelicals, Orthodox, Anglicans, and other subdenominations. And about half of all Christians live in just 10 countries. And the top three populations were the United States, Brazil, and Mexico. Well, what does that have to do with reality? What does it have to do with the president losing and another president being elect? First, I'd like to give credit to a group that compiles and maintains this information from Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And they um, say, and they said, it relates to developments in the United States located in the Euron Wendat and how Dino Sani people, traditional territory, the Upper Canada Treaties cover the term how Dino Sani, which refers to the Iroquois confederation comprising of the Mohawks, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca, and the Tuscarora nations. It's extremely important to know that they prom do not promote the beliefs and practices of any single de denomination, faith group, or sect within a single religion. Instead, they explain the views, procedures, and history of the faith groups. So having stated that, I want you to realize that we are not attacking anyone. We are talking about denominations that are living on this earth, that are making decisions, as a group, and out of that group, the American believers, of which there are about 200 to 230 million people, as they claim, quote unquote, to be Christian, they made a decision. The majority of the churches that I followed, and those are the evangelicals, and those are people that are following Sid Roth and others, those are people that are listening to Paula White and her group. Yes, they promoted that Mr. Trump was a man of God. God had appointed him for this current time. And yet, when God speaks and his word does not come through, he is very simple. He said, I did not say that. And if someone lies... And this is what I proclaim. If someone lies, yes, folks, if someone lies, that means you're not telling the truth. You either repent or you are basing it on something that is not based on reality. Like Mr. Trump lives in a total fatal area of his life. He cannot and will not accept reality. Well, there is a disease called ADHD, and that is something you cannot help. The people that are enabling him and manipulating him, those are the people that I'm warning. And I'm saying, be very careful, friends, because you are dealing with God Almighty. You're dealing with a spiritual concept that Mr. Trump is the way he is. That is his challenge. He can't help it. I am not addressing that. I am addressing the body of Christ that considers him a tool in their hands. They're promoting God speaking to people to force them to put money on the table to support him. And we're not talking a few bucks. We're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I'm talking about you, my friend, the leadership. If you don't like what I have to share with you, then face this. My breakthrough came defending my position in court. And I was facing six years times three upon sentencing by a judge after being in court for 12 years, after being milked out for millions of dollars. But you know, it was such a relief to get finally the answer. 
But before he gave us the answer as self-defense, I was pre-sentenced already because he said, you are going to do time. He took it personal. And why was that? Because a group of people, and actually one fellow by the name of Freemasons, he was the head of the Freemasons in London, Ontario, living in a 15,000 square foot home, being a multimillionaire, very impressive. He shared with me, he said, if you do not accept my proposal, you will regret this. And this was in 1999, an amazing grace. When my office started to grow, I got a 5,000 square foot office and 10,000 square foot office. We did millions of dollars and ended up with billions of assets. All of a sudden, attack after attack after attack. I did not pay much attention to Freemasons at the time. I should have, but I didn't realize what I was up to. And ignorance is no excuse. And so I share with the body of Christ that ignorance is no excuse. If God speaks, he speaks, but you know it in your heart. If people speak in behalf of God, God said, be ye careful. Folks, I'm not saying this because I like this. I'm sharing this because what is the body of Christ? As I was defending and I was forced to learn how the law works, evidence is always what makes the case. If you can prove the issue with evidence. And so we are going back to where did Christianity start? Did Christianity kill Jesus? Oh, no, that were the Jews. Okay, so the Jewish people killed Jesus. But there was no Jesus. It was Jesua Hamashiach. The word Jesus became a name over a period of 325 years. Because as Jesua HaMashiach, the way, the truth, and the light, and his followers, the Essenes, the people that were truly seeking to serve the Lord God Almighty by elevating and recognizing the law of God, that was their true connection to God Almighty. They were searching how to honor God. And when the man of righteousness, Jesua HaMashiach, known to many as Jesus, came on this earth, they followed him and they became the first century believers. And for 300 years, they had a tough time, but they were spreading. The Apostle Paul was on his way to Damascus. That was the main, the head office of the first disciples. Paul, at that time, had a mandate to kill all the disciples of Jesua HaMashiach. And on his way, he got hit by a big light, and the light finally shined on him. His eyes opened, and he became a follower of the way, the truth, and the light. He went for many years into the desert. He was trained and educated by God himself. The Spirit of God taught him like the Spirit of God will teach you and me. See, folks, when I put out my hands, I got five fingers on my hands. One goes to you, four goes to me. Do you know what that means? As much as I speak to you, I speak to myself. I was a prodigal son. But in my mind, I was a Christian. I was a man of God. I was trained. I was doing the work of God. But when I was sitting in a cell with the enforcer of the Hells Angels, Americ, and we became friends, yet everyone else was scared. Why? He was instrumental to the killings of several people, and some of them were not nice people. We had several people that got shanked to death. And if you want to know what a shank is, that's a homemade weapon. If you are in jail and you have no weapon, you can be killed any moment. And so I've seen several people several times who had a lockdown because another guy had been shanked and was found lifeless in his cell, dead. But my friend who was the enforcer. Inside, we all wore the same uniform, an orange coverall. We were the same. And he could not sleep. 
And this is where, as strong as he was, every time you take the life of somebody, at night, it will come back to you. It will come back to you. And this is where I became the enforcer for the Lord. Because I know one thing, to pray and in, initiate the introduction to God the Father. That's one thing I love to see, no matter what I wear, whether I wear a nice jacket or a coverall, I am the one that knows the Father. Do you know the Father? We are His children. And as I introduced my friend to the Father, we prayed together. We saw the love of God. And peace came over him and he could sleep. Another night, another night. And so five months after he got finally his sentence, and I got my sentence shortly thereafter, he got a year minus one day. That meant, yes, two years minus one day. That meant he stayed in provincial. I got six years for offending the Freemasons by not surrendering or sharing with them the billions of dollars of collateral. How dare you? This is our money. Excuse me? It's God's money. And I paid the price for that. But through that price, I learned something. Are we Christians? Or are we prodigal sons and daughters? And my friend, I tell you, I can no longer say that I am a Christian. Because Christianity is not what it is supposed to be. If the people, leaders, are forcing you to share and follow President Trump, and now you find out that the guy lied, because if you say God just says the Lord, and he doesn't speak, then God says that person is a liar. A liar won't enter the kingdom of God. So which kingdom are we talking about? Are we talking about the kingdom of Satan? Or are we talking the kingdom of God? The one that we are praying for so often. And it should not actually be the our father, but it should be the disciples' prayer. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know where his kingdom is? In your heart. In your searching, God says, your kingdom, God's kingdom is in my heart. And the light that he is looking for is the light that shines when we do what he says. Now, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've written down and I ended up with this because I got excited about it. Reality is, what is the evidence? And tomorrow I will be dealing with evidence of God. Is it evidence of God or evidence that we found on this, in this society? Going back to a person that knew that he, what he was talking about. We call him the expert witness. An expert is someone that studied, that lived in that time and knows about it. That is the person that I will be dealing with. Now, this is restorative justice. And this is number nine. We'll continue to work till we get it right, till someone opens his eyes. Because the prodigal son and daughter, those were invited. Not some fancy name, not some fancy religion that is mixing paganism with God. Because God says, where there is light, there is no darkness. There cannot be any darkness living with God. And so we need to really re-examine our life. Can we reinvent our life? If you are curious about that, stay with me. If you're not, don't bother. It doesn't hate you now, but it will come eventually. Remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.
get nothing back Wherever I go, it's the same There's no excuses, no one to blame Sometimes I can understand how it can be So I to stay out of pain But with you, everything has changed Even though we both stay the same Would you hold me tight in the rain?